All right, everyone, we're gonna get started. Does everybody get some pizza and water? Situated for the next hour or so? Okay, great. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the orientation uh, for information systems and uh, computer systems engineering, some of you here. Um, we're gonna get started, we're gonna have a presentation here uh, with some of the people that work within our program. Uh, with the co-op, student services, and then uh, your program director will address you um, at the, towards the end of the presentation. Um, so sit tight, you'll get some useful information out of this, learn a little bit more about the programs and the classes that we offer, and um, hopefully you get a lot out of it. So we're just gonna get right into it, okay? <coughs> so uh, information systems <coughs> and computer systems engineering is a part of our unit, Multidisciplinary Graduate Engineering. And that unit is headed by Dr. Tristan Johnson, who's the Assistant Dean. Uh, Tristan has joined us uh, Greetings. this afternoon. So we're based, we're based mostly out of the fifth floor of Dana Hall, right across the street from here. Um, so you'll, I'm sure we'll see a lot of you up there in the future, uh, but just want to familiarize you guys with some faces up there. Um, so we'll go over a couple things here. Our, our next unit that we're gonna get into, we're gonna start with co-op. Uh, with Mar uh, Marie Cliparosi and Jessica Pike. And then we're going to follow it with Haley Lyons giving you a student service overview. I'll come back for program requirements and then uh, Dr. Bugarara will give you a little bit more program overview, okay? All right, good <coughs> afternoon everybody. I'm Jessica Pike and I'm one of the co-op coordinators here um, for Information Systems. Excellent. So welcome again, everybody. Again, my name is Jessica Pike, Information Systems Co-op Coordinator. Hold on. And today's Jessica's birthday. Yes. It is. Yes. 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 Come on, head. This will wake everyone up. class that you all of you have to attend it's called ENCP, ENCP 6000 how many of you are already registered for the class raise your hands two people three okay so make sure that you do that uh, this is a very important class because without this class you cannot go in co-op so we are very happy um, our number are 80% placement today as per today so it's mean that all your senior, they've been placed to amazing company like Amazon, Google, uh, Facebook, um, a lot of company in Boston in different industry, and they're working there, and some of them, they have a full-time jobs offer already. So um, IS, it's a great program, like CSYE. We have done a lot of things lately. Uh, we had speaker session, uh, employer coming here, um, it, the market is very hot and this course will help you to understand where you are and where you want to be in your career. So hopefully that's our aim. Um, I'm really proud to work for IS because um, Dr. Bugara is amazing. He's very supportive about everybody and uh, we have a great team. Uh, we have uh, Nick, um, Robin and Yusef. They, we all work as a team. We all go to the employer, we work in project. We are very unique, and you should be really proud to be in this program. Um, so as part of a co-op uh, class, you will learn how to write <coughs> your resume, cover letter, <coughs> position statement, and what impor and most important things, you will learn how to build your brand. So who you are and where you wanna be, right? 
because most of you don't know. You have to figure it out. If you want to be a QA or a data scientist or whatever will be the case. So hopefully we'll be able to accomplish your dream. And uh, as everything has rules and regulations, so my coworker Jessica uh, will explain to you what's the rules for going in call. All right, everyone. So as Marika explained, the goal that we all have for you all is to, you know, go on co-op and follow the career dreams that you have. <coughs> However, with that being said, you all have to put in work, and we are not going to be able to magically grant you a co-op all the time without you putting in the effort. So here's the requirements to go up on co-op. You have to have a GPA of at least a 3.0, so working right away through your courses, having that GPA of a 3.0. Also, you have to take ENCP 6000, and you have to pass ENCP 6000. And then you, as well, you have to have 17 credits, complete 17 credits, and then you'll be able to go on co-op. Okay, so you're hearing this from day one. <laughs> um, and if there's any questions throughout this presentation, we provided links to the policies for the procedures, so you can check this out um, on your own as well. My name is Haley. Um, that's me, but I cut my hair. And uh, I am the program coordinator, and I'm super excited that you're all here, and I can't wait to work with you guys. So my title is program coordinator for both information systems and computer systems engineering as well. And my office is located in 130 Snell Engineering. Um, so you can come visit me there. I'll get more into that. OK, yeah. So I have walk-in hours. Um, throughout the year, they'll be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 2 to 4. During that time, the office is open for you guys to walk in. You can sign up on the iPad. Um, I just ask that you have all of the information that you have a question about. So let's say you're trying to register for a class. Make sure you have the course name, number, and then also the CRN number. That way, it's easier for me to know what you're asking for and be able to help you best. And then for the first two weeks of the, or first week of the semester, I'll be having extended walk-in hours. So the whole week you can come in between 10 and 12 and, or two and four. Um, and then of course, if you have an issue um, that you can't come during these times, you're always welcome to email me and I'm happy to set up an appointment. If um, you have something more serious you need to talk about, uh, hopefully we won't have to have academic probation meetings. But if it happens, that would be a good time for us to do an appointment instead of a walk-in. Um, yeah, so just, does everybody have their NUID? Do you know your nine-digit number? That's something you want to memorize, because um, all throughout campus you'll be asked for your NUID. Okay, so the registrar's office. They are located at 271 Huntington. I like to use food as references. So it's right by like the Five Guys on Huntington or the Starbucks, Panera area. If you don't know yet, you will. It's a good spot. And the registrar's office has a lot of useful information. So this, this is their website. I highly recommend checking it out. If you want to hit the... So you can see the catalog. So this is a very important resource for you to be aware of all of the program requirements. Um, they're all written there. And then also important would be calendar. So let's see, we're just coming off of a break. Um, so this calendar would have the dates that the university is open, any national holidays. Um, it also will have the add and drop deadlines. So that's something that I'll be reaching out to you guys about, giving you warning. Um, so I, it won't be until closer to the end of January, but you have to have added your courses by a certain date and having dropped courses that you don't want by a certain date. If you have any issues, you can always let me know. Um, but those are dates that you can find on the calendar, as well as breaks and all that. And then, yeah. Um, so yeah, the university graduate catalog. 
It has the official curriculum requirements and then the elective options. So definitely check this out. Make sure you know what your program requirements are. And then you want to read the academic policies and procedures, the code of conduct, and the Student Bill of Academic Rights and Responsibilities. You are um, held uh, reliable for knowing what these all say. Um, so make sure you read it over. That way there's no, oh, I didn't know. And yeah, so these are some academic requirements. Um, in order to graduate, you have to meet all of the requirements. You must have a cumulative GPA of a 3.0. So that's a B. So you could get a B minus and a B plus, and that would also equal 3.0. But obviously, you want to strive for the highest grade possible. Um, so a, C, a grade of a C or better is required in all of the core courses. Uh, for info, there's one core course. For CSYE, there's two. So do really well in those. We'll do really well in all of them. And then, yeah, so if you go below 3.0, um, you'll be on academic probation. So that is dropping below 3.0, you would come in and we would have a meeting and we would fill out a probation plan, um, just making sure that you're on track to be able to bring your grades above a 3.0. Um, it's not really a situation that anybody wants to be in, so do really well, ask your teachers for help, come see me if you have any problems, you guys will be great. Just like what I was saying, the academic probation policy, have to get above 3.0. Um, if you drop below 3.0 for two consecutive terms, you could be dismissed from the school. Um, yeah, and, and you can see this. So make sure that you read and verify having read the policy. Um, I'll probably reach out to you at some point and say, hey, could you sign off on this if you haven't done that yet? Okay, now comes the, the good stuff. Registration. So back to the registrar's office. Through their website, you can find the schedule and it'll have banner class schedule. So if you click on that, it will bring you to be able to find the CRNs. So the CRN is like the five digit number that is special for that class. So let's say info 5100. There's going to be a number of sections. So you want to make sure that you know the <laughs> CRN for your section. And that you can find on the class schedule. You can look at all the classes that are offered. And then for you to be, once you have your CRN, once you know what classes you want to register for, you go into MyNEU. Um, so our MyNEU looks different from yours. So this is how you'll do it. You'll go through MyNEU, click on the self-service tab, and then course registration. And then you want to do add or drop classes. Um, I just want to put a little disclaimer. Try not to go to this page and add or drop classes unless you're 100% sure because it's really hard if there's an error to get it back to how it should have been. Um, so only come to this particular spot when you're sure you have your CRNs, they're the ones that you want. So then you would want to select spring 2018 for this term. And this is where, this is what it will look like. So you put the five digit code in to and then you hit submit changes, and then it'll show up like this. So if you were able to get into the class, it'll say web registered. And then the action, don't touch that, because if you do, it'll come as a drop down that says drop class, and if you accidentally click on that, then you lose your spot, and it's a, not a good situation to be in. So once you have your classes, web registered, just leave the page. Um, and then if you wanted to get into a class that is full, there is something called a wait list. So the wait list we cap at 15. So there are 15 spots on the wait list. And those 15 people on the wait list are eligible for a seat in the course if someone who's already registered drops it. So does that make sense? So if you might see that that it says closed and that you can add it, and then it'll show up as a wait list. And that means that if someone who's already registered drops the class, and you're, let's say you're the first on the wait list, then as soon as they drop that class, you're gonna get an email from the registrar's office that says there's a position available. So that's why it's super important not to drop the class unless you really mean to, because it'll automatically let someone else who's on the wait list know that that seat's available. If you have any problems, just let me know. All right, and then if you do get on the wait list or you wanna be on the wait list, it'll come up as the status says wait list instead of web registered. 
And then, okay, so then you might run into some restriction issues. Um, blanket statement, you are only allowed to take IS or CSYE courses. So if you see a program restriction, that's because it's a different program and you're not um, able to register for their courses. So just make sure that, <coughs> excuse me, that this subject will say CSYE or IS and then you won't get that error. Okay, so if you get a prerequisite and test score error, that means that you haven't taken the course required to take before you take that class. So let's say you want to take, <coughs> excuse me, info 7250, but it has a prereq of info 6250. You can't take that class unless you've taken the prereq. Does that make sense? Okay, also there are no waivers and no transfer credit. So if you took a class in your undergrad you and it's similar to a class that is required here, you still have to take it. Um, so, but they're all great classes, you wanna take them. And then an attribute, so that would be like for an online class, so um, after your two semesters, if you do go on co-op, you are eligible to take a course while you're on co-op as long as it doesn't interfere with your work. Um, so you might get an attribute error that way and then I can help you. And then a closed section, so like I was saying, you know, the classes have a limit and the waitlist also has a limit. So if it comes up as closed, unfortunately there's nothing you or I can do it means that the course is full and the registrar's office has closed off registration for it. And then if you're trying to register for more than eight um, semester hours, you'll get an error that says that you're trying to register for more credits than you are allowed. So in that case, if you are trying to drop and add a class, you want to do it on the same page so that you don't get a situation where, oh, I meant to add this class while I was dropping that class, but somebody else got that spot. So you wanna do it on the same page and it'll look like the previous page. But if you need any help, I'm more than happy to show you or help you with it. Okay, so then let's say you're registered and then there's another class that you suddenly find and you're really interested in it. So you're welcome to change your registration within the add and drop periods. Um, you just have to be sure that you meet the prerequisites required like we talked about, as long as it's an IS or CSYE course and as long as there's a seat available for registration or on the wait list. So this is the ad drop deadline. Um, I'll be sure to let you guys know in a couple weeks, but if you want to take note. And then you don't have to worry about time tickets right now, but in your next semester you'll be issued a time ticket and that'll tell you when you're able to register for classes. And I know some students are uh, upset because their time ticket isn't like the minute that registration opens. That's just because they do it by credit, so the seniors, the ones who have most credits, they get to register first. So once you get to that point in your academic career, then you'll be able to register first. But for right now, your registration date will probably be a couple of days after it opens. And then, yeah, so OGS, the Office of Global Services, I'm sure you're familiar with them, they have automatically set your registrations to uh, between eight and nine credits. So it's eight credits because the two classes that you're going to register for are both four credits. And then the one um, optional additional course that you definitely want to take is the co-op class and that's a one credit course. So that's why there's the eight to nine. And then again, just same screen reiterating how important that is. And then yeah, so if the class is full, you're welcome to join the waitlist if there is space available. We have them capped at 15. If the waitlist is full, Lucky for you, you can take it in another semester. All right, and um, that's about it. I know I went through a lot. Um, and I, I know you guys have a lot of information being thrown at you, so if you wanna email me, that's my email address. That's where my office is located. Just again, these are my um, extended walk-in hours starting on Monday. My regular walk-in hours, which will resume after the 12th. And then if you wanna do an individual appointment, um, just send me an email. Give me as much information as possible. And then also, just to note, there's only one of me, there's a lot of you. I only work Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 5. So I will do my very best to email you as soon as you email me, um, but sometimes it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get back to you. So give me like 48 hours before you send me a friendly reminder. Um, but I'm really looking forward to meeting you all and hearing about your wonderful academic experience with the IS and CSY program.
back. So that's me um, with my contact information up there. Um, I'm academic operations coordinator for IS and CSYE. I'm responsible for a lot of the class scheduling. Um, but any other questions that you may have that you might be wondering of who to get in contact to because you don't know if it falls within co-op or student services or professor, you don't know if you should go to Professor Grar about this, you can always contact me as well. Um, you know, we work as a team and we want to make sure that uh, we are available resources for you all during your time here at Northeastern. Um, I'm also, I sit up on the fifth floor of Dana Research Center, so um, I'm sure I'll see a lot of you up there in the future. Okay, so uh, we'll start right away um, with who should I see if I have a problem? Uh, we all know these kind of things can come up when you're you know, studying abroad and you're here and you're, you're trying to navigate your studies and living and we, we put a list together of the, the, who you can contact. Administrative advising questions, uh, that would be Haley, who you just spoke with. Um, registration, once you're ready for graduation potential OGS questions, anything else really pertaining to your academic studies and registration type things, uh, definitely go see Haley during her walk-in hours or make an appointment with her. Um, academic questions relating to course and career alignment, uh, we have some of our full-time faculty who are on campus and available to help you guys. Um, Professor Yusuf Osbeck, Professor Nick Brown, and Professor Robin Hilliard, great resources. They sit in Dana as well. Um, they have their own offices, and they'll have, once the semester gets started, they'll be listing their office hours, so you can go visit with them as well. Um, personal crises that might affect your degree, um, things that might come up that are a little bit bigger than um, your studies. Professor Vergara is a resource that you can certainly reach out to, and he's a great uh, person that can help you kind of navigate those things that come up that might be a little bit bigger um, than just your studies. And if, again, to reiterate, if you have any questions, the, the issue that arises uh, doesn't fall necessarily under any of those, email me. I will do what I can to either help you find a solution to what's going on or I will help you point, uh, point you in the right direction. Okay, so uh, we're going to get into the classes now. Um, these are going to be things you want to take note of. Um, so just keep in mind, we're going to go over the core course requirements and some of the electives that are going to be available to you during this first semester. So I know a lot of you are looking to register for classes, so we'll have those CRNs and the time, class times listed. So certainly take note. These are also online on the banner schedule that Haley showed you uh, in one of her slides. So certainly take note of these. So for IS, um, our core course is the Info 5100 class and the lab associated with it, Info 5101. Um, so that's, a, that's four credit hours. And in addition to that, during your time here, you'll need to take seven elective courses from only IS and or the CSYE engineering classes. Not, that does not include the IoT, uh, Internet of Things uh, concentration. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at it because sometimes you need to make sure that you're signing up for the right classes within uh, CSY. Okay, so Info 5100, this is a requirement in the first semester for all incoming IS students, okay? So we have one section this spring uh, that Professor Bugari teaches himself. It's gonna be on Friday afternoons. And the CRN, um, you'll see listed there, 37649. Again, that is like the fingerprint for the class. So every class, and every section on campus has one of those numbers. So that's the number you're gonna to wanna to input on your worksheet when you're registering for the class, okay? And the lab associated for it, um, you can see right below it. Okay, we're gonna get into some of the first term electives. Um, I want you to keep in mind that a lot of these electives are great for first term students, but some of these will have continuing students in them as well. We've listed all the sections on there um, that you'll see on the banner web schedule. Now, some of them you'll go to and at a time you might wanna take or with a professor you're interested in taking it with and the class might be full or the wait list might even be full, please look for the other sections that are available. Um, if you're really interested in taking the class, um, you're gonna to wanna to move it to a different section um, if you wanna take it this term. Keep in mind, all our professors, our full-time and our part-time faculty are fantastic. Um, so you really can't go wrong with any of the sections um, if you're really interested in taking the class. So we'll, 
some of the uh, electives that you have in place for you are Info 6150, Web Design and User Experience Engineering. We have two sections of those, one on Saturday afternoons and one on Wednesday evenings. Uh, Info 6205, Program Structure and Algorithms. We have three sections. Um, one is on Saturday mornings, and then we have two other, and these are sections that run twice a week. Uh, for shorter amount of class times, but you'll see a Tuesday and Thursday section and then a Tuesday and Friday with this corresponding CRN. So please take note of those if you haven't already. <coughs> um, moving on, Info 6210, Data Management and Database Design. We have four sections available right now, one on Monday evenings, one on Friday evenings. Uh, the Tuesday and Friday morning section, again, is <coughs> double plot. Uh, two classes in the week, and then a Wednesday evening one. Um, one of the online first term electives that we have available is Info 6215, Business Analysis and Information Engineering, and the CRN is listed there as well. Okay. Um, Info 7390, Advances in Big Data Sciences and Architecture, um, you'll see listed four sections. Um, a lot, some of this class is pretty popular. There might be, uh, some of the sections might be full, but please take note. Um, and if you see it, uh, definitely sign up if you're interested or get on the wait list. But we have the Saturday morning, a Wednesday evening, Wednesday and Friday, and then a Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, and uh, so CSYE wise, uh, 6200, which is the core course for CSYE. Um, there are three sections of that, um, all in the evenings, Monday night, Friday night, and Wednesday night, that's the concept of object-oriented design. Uh, as you move on, additional CSYE electives will become available in the, starting in the fall for you first-term students to take. Okay. Again, everyone, these are all on the banner web schedule, so you know I'm listing them here for you guys, but you can also go find these online as well. Okay. Um, and then, so the last one, uh, the ENCP 6000 course. This is the co-op course that uh, Professor Perosi and Professor Pike just spoke to you at the beginning of the presentation about, Career Management for Engineers. This is the one credit course, so when they spoke to you about getting 17 credits to go on, if you, you need to submit, you know, take two semesters worth of classes, um, which would be 16, and then the one credit course for co-op, which gives you 17, okay? So it's very important. These two sections available have openings in them. If you're interested in taking the course in your first semester, uh, we have, a, they're typically during the day, these, these uh, co-op courses, a Wednesday from 11.45 to 1.25, and then a Tuesday afternoon section beginning at 1.35. Um, a little note, you know, they, they reminded you, but to be eligible to go on co-op, you must complete this class. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you, if not all of you, are interested in going on co-op during your time here. So please, please, please think about taking the course and um, you know, passing it and doing well in it because it really will prepare you uh, to go on co-op and hopefully for future full-time opportunities. Um, Reiterating cat course catalog and registration information. I know it's a long uh, link there, but a lot of these information, a lot of these, on these two links, you can go to and find out a little bit more in depth about the program. I, Professor Brewer is going to speak to you after myself and kind of give you a little bit more. But if you want to see something on the website, you can go to these two links, uh, look at some of the courses we offer, and more learn more about uh, multidisciplinary graduate engineering, or as you'll learn to know, MGen. That's our uh, the short version. Um, certainly use those links. Go read up, learn about the professors, the people that work in our unit, um, to give you a little bit more inside information. Um, so we're also trying to expand our social media presence, um, so hopefully you get updates on what's going on, not only with within multidisciplinary, um, but within the College of Engineering and, North, and Northeastern University as a whole. Um, so please check out our, our tags here on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. Um, if you have any other media, social media sites you think we should be on, feel free to bring it to my attention. We can try to add it. Um, but certainly go out, like, subscribe, join, and uh, there's usually a lot of good information on there. All right, and that does it for my end of the presentation.
thank you for listening through all that. I know it can be a lot. Um, I know classes are starting soon, so appreciate all your patience as we get going and uh, looking forward to the semester. So I'm going to turn it over to Professor Bagrara. Real quick, real quick, thanks Sam. Just uh, want to take the opportunity, I, I think I've seen a couple of you in some of my travels overseas. Welcome to, to Northeastern. It's a beautiful place to be, isn't it? The white snow and it's freezing. <laughs> it's just incredible, isn't it? It's really cool. Just real quick, um, I don't want to take away from, from the, um, the information Dr. Brugar is going to go over here, but um, I'm really proud of our academic and our coordinators and our, and our, and our faculty teaching and co-op and so forth. One of the things that I really want to emphasize, um, day in and day out, when I work and, I, and I'm trying to help make differences and improve things, my job is to make life better for you guys, okay? So I work hard with Dr. Brigar, with the call faculty, with the coordinators. We, Northeastern IS program is career centric, okay? You come here, Dr. Brigar is an excellent, excellent professional who knows his craft, he knows the people, he works very hard, he spends a lot of hours trying to recruit the best teachers, and the fun part is he does a great job, so it makes my life easy. But honestly, he goes out there, he brings people that are working currently in industry, innovating, he brings them and puts them right in front of you. So when you meet with people, you're meeting with the people that actually are, are looking to hire people also. Now, the chance of you getting hired by one of them, who knows what the chances are, except they know their craft and we're trying to push the envelope. The Northeastern program and IS has done a phenomenal job at preparing students. So when Dr. Ferrozzi um, was talking about uh, the percentage of placement for IS, yeah. there's two components to that. There's the industry need and then there's also the student talent, okay? If the, if the industry has a need and the student talent is, is acceptable, then students get hired. So we're about 80%, which is one of the highest programs here at Northeastern, to be honest. Now, but that requires one thing, right? Okay. So the one thing that I'll warn you is if you come here, Dr. Brugard does a phenomenal job, but he also is gonna push you, okay? So just remember, He's given, you a, he's given you the opportunity. He set up a program and it works phenomenally. The success rate of the students is at a very high level, but the students also have to work. So I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna be your uncle, okay? <laughs> your Indian and Chinese uncle, okay? <laughs> I don't have a good accent, otherwise I would give it to you, but nevertheless. So if I was your uncle, okay, and you're my nephew, right? Right, guess what I'm gonna tell you? Work hard, son, <laughs> right? I mean, it's your opportunity, but you have to seize it. You all have worked hard to get the opportunity. You've convinced uh, the, the vetting powers to accept you. But also remember, you have a number of other people that are in your lives that have given you the opportunity to be here right now. Who can, who can think of anyone? Anyone? Who, who's helped you get to where you are right now, sitting in the seat? Anyone? This is, this is, I sound like I'm a uh, parent. Your parents, right? Your mom, siblings. Your teachers, your parents primarily, right? A lot of us, uh, and even when I went to school, your parents are investing in you, right? Okay, great. They're investing their money. Hopefully they might get a return on their money. Uh, but what are you all investing? Maybe you have some money you're helping to pay for, but what else are you investing? Your time, right? Okay, so really, this is your opportunity to seize it, and, and the thing you can offer is focus and time, okay? And we know you have great opportunities. He changes programs all the time so that the courses you're taking are fresh and competitive, okay? And that's very important. I've seen other programs that are not fresh and competitive, and the students go out there, and they, they learn stuff that was 10 years old, okay? That's, that's not acceptable. So you have the opportunities now. So you can rest assured he's going to lead you and guide you. Now it's your chance to actually spend your time. So what's going to happen though, as your, as your uncle, is I'm going to say, what's your name? 
Li Shou, uh, Li or Shou, because well, you say Li Shou, but I say Li Shou. Look at uh, you know you're gonna want to go out with your girlfriend on Friday night, right? And say, son, you gotta work hard. Okay, your friends are gonna go to the party on Sunday. You say, has your homework been done? Have you excelled? Remember, but this is your opportunity, right? So make sure you're you're focusing, working hard. Okay. And if you're having problems, it's it's always better to ask for help when you have that problem. Don't be embarrassed. Pardon me. You will be embarrassed, but but you need to get over that and go ask for help because people can't help you unless you tell them there's a problem right away. It's your responsibility to take ownership of your problem. Okay, I'm done being an uncle. Congratulations. Welcome to Northeastern, a beautiful place to be, even in the cold weather. It will get warm. It'll be very nice in the summer. It's a pleasure to be here. It's also a pleasure to introduce Dr. Vergara and welcome him to the stage. And it's his turn now. Thank you. start with a nice little email I received a couple of weeks ago from one of our graduating students. So I'm going to go to the end of the movie, <coughs> right, after you, you go through all of this, you know, and the drama and the, and here's what one student was saying a couple of weeks ago. Right, this is her message to me. This year, it's very meaningful to me. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to up do a project related to one of the most advanced technologies with you and make some progress. The summer in this year is, is the best I've ever had as I learned not only so many things but also ways to implement new technologies like blockchain and smart contracts. Also, I graduated at the end of the year I feel excited, but I also a little sad for graduating from our program. I really enjoyed the two years I spent here, which makes me qualified software engineer. This is her evidence. Thank you for providing so many great classes and also conducting the most important of them yourself. Right. So this is her feeling after she finished. She has a great job offer. $100,000 starting salary, right? And she will be starting next month, right? Having done all the work that's necessary, right? So what's at the heart of this? I'm gonna just show you her project, one of the projects that she worked on. So she did the, uh, a blockchain project, and this is uh, her animation of the work. It's a major thing called credit agreements, very complex software that she put on the blockchain. She never knew anything about the blockchain before the start of the summer. So the phone is becomes the identity of the person and how you log in through your iPhone. Now the banker is looking at these complex credit agreements. All the data is being moved to the back end or the blockchain. So this will be one huge borrower needing billions of dollars like Facebook and there will be about 20, 30 lenders providing the money for their loan. So this is gonna be a quick uh, So 
I showed this to bankers, then they were stunned with what they were able to, what they were seeing, that our students' ability to put this stuff on a super complex piece of technology like the blockchain. Right, so now the contract is being prepared. So, so the idea of these super complex 200 page contracts instead of being a legal problem, now it's becoming an application. Right? This legal stuff, we don't need lawyers, we need programmers now. Right? And pretty much all the legal stuff is enforced by the software. This is the future we'll go into. Right, so she also set up the payment schedule. This would be like a five year, year uh, loan. And now you're gonna see that she's gonna bring, okay, so there's a, right, so the blockchain is now gonna require a comp a, uh, an approval from the user, and the user is gonna be, be using their uh, smartphone for, for the approval process, okay. No passwords anymore. And now, you know, the legal, she's gonna also show you, you know, this is the fl money flow. So the borrower here needs $1 million. These lenders are gonna provide the loan. Okay. And that whole flow is all meant securely uh, using blockchain technology. Okay, and notes her presentation as well. So this is all her presentation. Being a good software engineer requires this kind of professional. <coughs> and the point, okay, so here's the, uh, the references to the legal document here. So now the, you've got the application and the legal document is in the background. You make a reference to it. Is it what, what's the issue? All right. So again, a piece of a legal document is showing up over here. So there's an indexing of these contracts that are showing on the background. So this stuff is all logged. The approvals, the digital signatures are all approved on the blockchain and it stands to legal scrutiny. So as we think of this application, we're thinking the stuff is gonna go to court, and you need to produce the evidence that the sig signer, the, you have authenticated the user and you have authenticated the document, right? So, so the point here is primarily our courses, right? This two-year experience comes like this. When it's all said and done, this is what all the courses, all the teachers, all the knowledge, Professor Tristan, and all, the co-op team is gonna come look exactly like this. Right? This is what you will be able to do. So, so the challenge we at some point we throw out students, okay, fine, you took about 28 courses, uh, 28 credit hours, you know, can you do something creative or innovative beyond what you've do ever done before, right? So, so when she went through the job interview, she said, well, we're, you know, the, the job ha it doesn't, it didn't have anything to do with the blockchain, but we said, you know what? We're a creative company and you are a creative person. <laughs> we share something in mouth, that's why we wanna hire you. All right, so this is by a company called Audible, which is a, uh, an Amazon company. So that creative nature of taking on some new challenge and being able to co uh, solve it is what make you who you are. So part of the challenge, you're gonna be passing your courses Right? You're gonna be learning so much, but where is that innovative and creative side of things? And this is where universities is a good place to start learning how to push the envelope to start thinking creatively instead of just fighting your courses, teachers, and the like, right? So, in any case, that's, so this is the end of the movie. The program is not very difficult to, uh, uh, to explain. Uh, there's no program on, on, on Earth that knows how to deal with applications the way we do, right? Design, architecture of applications is where we stand, and this is where everyone is going right now, right? So, so I tell the students, you know, so, so it, you know, I, uh, Professor Tristan was asking me what the, what is IS, right? What is a software engineer? 
<coughs> they said, okay, here's a Mickey Mouse graph, maybe that can help explain what do we do, right? And what makes us different, right? That the idea of an engineer has three components. The ability to deal with the real world problems, right? The ability to understand all these software engineering techniques, programming, Java, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a third component that your ability to function under time, cost, and quality constraints. How could you write an application or a program if you are not on top of these three components of what it means to be a software engineer? And we like our students, our graduates, to be really an ideal software engineer is, is going to be someone at the intersection of these three skill sets. And this is what we need you to thrive to achieve. The ability to be able to look at the problem from a business perspective and understand its complexity and be able to turn around and say, aha, I do have an engineering solution for this. And this is what we hit you with from day one starting next week. So when you get into the application engineering class, the whole semesters we're beating on you, unfortunately, sorry about that, but this is the job we have to do, is how to think of an application as these three powerful components playing together on you, right? We want to build a food supply system. We want to build a drug counterfeit application. We want to build a blood supply system for the Red Cross. What does it mean? You know, what is the Red Cross? What do they do? What software engineers techniques I need? How much time do I have? These are the issues that we need, we need to get you to, to be able to get into the world of how to be able to be a true software engineer who is a problem solver, right? So I always tell my people, look, you know, we just want to be like a, a, the way bridge engineers function, <laughs> right? If you're a bridge engineer, you know, what do you do? You know, you mix cement or you build beautiful bridges, right? Or do you worry about the molecules of cement? There's a balance, right, of what it, it means to be a bridge engineer. But definitely one of them is not going to be expertise in how to analyze the molecules of cement. You need the spec, what kind of cement, under what conditions, right? It will function best for that environment. How about the zoning of the city and the like? So that parallel for us is very important when we build software, because at the end of the day, we're building the software for humans to solve the uh, social issues, right? So that's really where we are, how we think about applications. We don't think it's a, it's a programming problem that you're fa you have out there, okay? Anybody can program. But building something powerful that has a powerful impact is where the issues are. There are no more Mickey Mouse problems out there, okay? All these little apps, you know, you can get there and get, make a penny and get rich off are gone, right? They're all human, superhuman complex problems that have to be solved, and software engineers are gonna be in the middle. And we want to be a part, we want to be a contributor to that. And we're putting you right in the middle of that in this program. Right? So, so this is what IS is. So our courses are going to be in these three categories. Real world type problem, business analysis, business process engineering, organizational change, class, communication are all you know, real world related classes. How to build the skills to understand company strategy, how to understand, you know, the, the skills, how to analyze a problem, how to deal with the client needs. You know, right now we have even the user experience class, you know, do we classify that as a technical class or do we classify it as a building the tools to communicate better with people in terms of what their visual, you, you know, user interaction needs are, right? So in any case, you're gonna find our class in these different categories. I'm not gonna to dwell too much on that, right? But this is on the software engineering side. We have so much to offer. Yes, the program is large, but the, the program is also broad, right? So one time we, you know, we have the students, you know, we need more courses, you know, okay, we got more courses, right? So, so now the students are not complaining it's a large program anymore. They're complaining we have too many courses and we have too little time, okay? So this is the benefit of a large program like this. There's just the vastness of options of what you can do, right? 
but they are not redundant. They are very relevant to what's needed out there. You just have to decide where you want to play, All right? So a lot of you end up looking at a circle like this and start trying to play it in relation to your personality. Am I a little bit more on the uh, business side? Am I a little bit more on the heavy technical? Am I more into the project management or I'm gonna be a balance and be able to play in different scenarios, right? So this is part of the strategy, how you wanna think of yourself, right? So, so probably already made the argument that how this program is very different from a, being a computer science program, okay? We don't think of programming as an input and output problem. We think of programming as a social problem, right? We're dealing with the human being as users and they are the center of the problem solving exercise itself. We want to use technology to reduce, uh, you know, uh, certain diseases in societies, right? So the human being is the subject, but also the user. How in the heck are we going to build applications where we are, have that entanglement of the things we're trying to solve, and at the same time, they are the users of this system? And that's class number one. The application engineering is just going to get into that issue right away. Zero programming is okay. Ye Ming, with her email, she never programmed before. She was a double E coming to the program. All right? Nobody knows how to take engineers of different backgrounds and turn them into amazing software engineers like we do. The magic will start with the application engineering. How we approach programming and the application engineering is very unique. Right? Where we take people, you saw the assumption we always made is engineers have, have amazing talent, technically, but they've been poorly serve, served by their engineering colleges worldwide when it comes to software, and we're taking an advantage of that, of showing people how to think of software as an engineering problem, not the computer science programming problem, right? Now, remember, I'm a computer science by training, all right? But the job I got over here is, Cal, how do you teach uh, software to engineers? Right, so it's a completely different paradigm from even how I think about programming. But we said, so we say, Right, so the techniques we built over the years trying to solve this problem, how to teach software to engineers is, how do we make programming as a design problem? Not how many lines of code you can write, how fast. It turns out good design means less programming. Right? Clarity of thought is key in writing clean, simple code that even little kids can, can deal with. Right? But sitting down and let me program it for you and then figure out what to do does not work here, right? That's the capability we try to get out of people. You know, that bad habit. There are a lot of programmers among you with bad habits. You know, let me start figuring, you know, programming and then let's figure out what to do later. No, right? We try to flip that. You know, it's stunning in our classes, especially the application engineering. Half the students usually never programmed before. The other half, you know, just, a long programming experience, but both students are struggling in the class. The programmers, bad programming happens that they have to get rid of, right? The whole semester, that's what they're doing, moving away from all these bad techniques they learned, while the new students, you know, they're just using a new methodology, right? No biases, no barriers to new ideas. So it ends up an amazing class where everyone is just struggling and at the end the result is amazing, right? And that's what you're gonna practice yourself in the application engineering. Once you go through that class, pretty much it's all done, right? You're primarily trying to finish to graduate. So, so I'm gonna just move quickly to where we are. There's a lot of challenges, you know, I think if I wanna say, you know, as you wanna think about your co-op, you know, the forces at play in the industry is hard to describe these days, right? Nobody knows where things are going. Just everybody is just catching up right now. Nobody can make a claim. They have a handle on what's happening, right? So it's probably clear to you. So what we know, lots, huge amounts of data, and they don't know what to do with it. Can you help us? With what? Uh, I don't know. We want to have something big data, right? 
must be properly, these data need to be leveraged right, for competitive advantage. New generation of applications that consume the data right, and produce smarter insights. Okay? So, so now we're taking old applications producing in new data that has intelligence and we're putting a new kinds of application on top of the new data. Right? So we're building smarter and smarter of applications. And your role, you have to play a role in that, right? So you need to be able to catch up to figure out exactly what's, what is the insight being uh, extracted from these, the generated data, and now what, is the, what does the future application look like, right? Same thing like what Yiming was doing with her application. The challenge is how to build for such a gigantic scale multiple enterprises and agencies collaborating to work together. And this is the most important thing you're gonna get out of the application engineering, that every application is an ecosystem of enterprises working together. And it's stunning watching the students in the semester say, oh, I need the government to participate, I need the NGOs to participate, I need the bank to be in the application, and suddenly the application is a conglomerate of participating enterprises, right? That's, that's the reality. Right? So a very complex set of skill sets are going to be needed. Okay? We know that. So it used to be like, do you know Spring and Hypernet? Do you know web development? Now we say, oh, we want web development. How about data science? Right? So this is what students are telling me. Professor, they're hitting us even with data science questions now. Right? AI, how about AI? Right? So the expectations of software engineers are just becoming higher and you know, these enterprises are becoming more and more demanding. So you know, you're supp I'm su all supposed to do is just be a good Java programmer. Oh, by the way, how about user experience? What is Angular 2? Angular 5, right? So the stuff is gonna be coming at you from industry, from different directions. Whether reasonable or not, it doesn't matter. These employees are gonna tell you exactly the stuff they're, they're dealing with, and you're supposed to respond, right? And the job of the program is to get you to a point where you're able to function properly and be able to respond to some of these challenges, right? But it could not be more exciting for you guys than now, right? This is the world we're in. So one way of thinking of the program, this is the bless we have for having a large program like this is the ability to have our course offerings in these different directions and have a huge impact. At the end of the day, still, it's a software engineering program that we, that we, that we have to offer, right? So, oh, we're still here, okay. Thank you. So the classes, as you see them, and I'm gonna give you these slides, you know, so, so right now we have different ways of thinking of our courses and clusters or tracks, but they are not official certificates yet, right? But this is one, what you're gonna see is a guidelines how to think of your courses. How would you organize them so they align with some skill set that people are looking for, right? So you're gonna see the different tracks that we, we have, but they are really primarily guidelines how you should be taking your classes, right? So the, uh, yeah, but we need to switch from. Oh. The So, so the different areas that you can think of the programming, you know, the <clears throat> so when students ask me what should I do, professor, I say, I don't know. So don't expect me to tell you what's right for you. That's not the job we do. Our job 
is to offer a platform where you can learn and grow and discover what's really best for you, right? A good program creates an environment where you can see for yourself what's appropriate, what's right. There's so many personalities of you here, you wouldn't believe, right? And for me to start telling you what to do is, is not a good idea, right? You will hate me for it one of these days. So the better approach is to discover that for yourself. We can tell you what you should do, but that's not the right thing to do. The thing is, when you go through this kind of change, you know, having come to this country when I was 18, freshman in college, right? That ownership of my, what, uh, of my destiny and what I want to do is the most powerful thing that became um, of who I am. I don't want to deprive you of that. There's so much change that you're gonna see in yourself almost every day, from the university, from the classes, from the teacher, from your peers. Your ideas are gonna be changing so fast you wouldn't believe. So there's no point in saying, I wanna be an, a UX expert now, right? Because things are changing. And you wanna take time to go through that change because you're gonna see things about yourself you didn't know existed before. And I think in one of these webinars, if you were on them, I was telling them probably the most powerful comment I heard from a student a couple of years ago that she was graduating. <clears throat> she said, Professor, I didn't know I had this in me about herself. Right? It could not be more powerful than that. Then I felt we've done our job. Right? So if there's no, if we're not sitting there, babysitting you, Right? You know, student satisfaction is not, a, is not a goal for us, right? It's not a student being happy is not a goal for us, right? It's the environment we provide that you can grow and achieve your level of independence so you can just excel out there is what we do, right? So we, uh, we have done our job when you have discovered the best you can be for yourself because that's what this country is about, right? And you want to take advantage of that to figure out exactly the best position you can have. And there's amazing energy in each one of you. The stories I have over the years are amazing. I have thousands of you out there. And they still come back. Right? So, so don't tell me we should tell you no. The basic academic advising is going to be some very simple. Like, where's Haley? You know? <laughs> right? I couldn't sign up here, you know? Right? But in terms of your program, we're going to sit you on a stage where you can start figuring out exactly what's best for you. It's a very diverse program. And that diversity creates richness as well. Right? You're going to meet different kinds of people. You know, we have, we, uh, where is it? You know, last year we had a water engineer <laughs> that want to become a software engineer in class. Environmental engineers, uh, double E, blah, 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 right? So there's so much in this diversity, and that is okay now because a software engineer right now is becoming a multidisciplinary idea. You need the social, you need this, you need the healthcare, you need everybody. You know, we have uh, pharmacists working with us, uh, doctors, nurses, bankers, all right? So, so in any case, the classes, you know, you will see them, you will look at courses in different categories. This is. Mobile computing, this as a discipline, user experience as a discipline. You know, for those of you who want a less emphasis on heavy programming, the application domain seemed to grow even more. This is what defines the program from day one. But right now, everybody sees the, the talent and the innovation, it happens at the application layer. That's true innovation, is user innovation not another programming language, right? That a little bit fancier than the previous one. But what, what impact your, your idea is gonna have on, on our people, okay? One student in the application engineer was working on fire, uh, you know, uh, fire detectors uh, in China. You know, he wanted to build a system that uh, reduces the false positives in these fire alarm systems. He had an amazing, idea, 
you know, uh, an amazing idea, but also at the same time, you know, it just had a very practical application. He used machine learning. When you install these fire uh, sensors, you know, you could test them in the factory the way you want, but nothing happens until you install them in a the building. He used machine learning to learn exactly the behavior of that sensor in the environment and adjust the thresholds over time so you, uh, you get rid of the false positives in these uh, fire alert systems, right? Just, <laughs> he did the fire stuff as an undergrad and he started tweaking the same project uh, when, when he came here, right? This is very powerful. This stuff people want to hear about, right? So this was, it turned out, okay, fire engines and big chain, this is what he was working on. You know, there are not, there are not too many fire engines. You, you cannot have enough fire engines in a big city like Beijing, but surely reducing the false positives, right? It, it has a, a safety impact. <coughs> not, not the system being overwhelmed where there, there would be too many fires, right? This stuff, this is the world of innovation, through innovation. So this area is growing, very important, and the applications engineering is taking you. Big data engineering, we have a number of amazing classes over here. Right, including the new class that we have on indexing of big data platforms. When you have hundreds of data channels coming in every day and you need to be able to detect an, an attack on a bank very quickly, how do you design these big data platforms? Right? People are working on that stuff. The, uh, so I think there's more the uh, cloud computing is a, is a big deal for us now. We are in AI and uh, cognitive computing. All right, and machine learning, we have a, a, an amazing two big courses in this domain. We combine them with big data, there's all kinds of stuff there. Then the human side of classes, business analysis, project planning, organization change, agile, you run quality assurance and financial systems. You know, they are running low these days, but pretty much there's a lot of emphasis on these different categories. So, so I'm not gonna take time to uh, go through the set, but uh, we're gonna share this different tracks with you as recommendation, guidelines, how we see these class, but by no means these are rules. There's only one core class for IS. And then it's up to you, do whatever you want. Okay? So that was my idea, okay? You know, you tell me what you want to do. Oh, professor. <laughs> right? <clears throat> so you have the freedom now, but you're scared of that freedom. Right? So, so we keep pushing you, you know, you decide. You're going to be sitting in that class for four months yourself. Right? If I tell you what to do, you're just going to be cursing me for four months. Right? And that's not a good idea anymore. Anyway. And besides, the new generation, you are very different from my generation. We were told what to do. Right? I was young, say, oh, you want to be an, a pilot, right? Or a scientist. And we were happy to do it. This is not, right? There's so much information coming from you. Oh, data science is the right thing to, oh, big data. Oh, they're not teaching you the right programming language. All these cousins and uncles you have out there, they're going to be on your case, what you should do with your life. <laughs> You've got to figure out exactly what you want to be faster than these people just going to be banging on you. All right? But I ain't going to be in the middle of that conversation. Just too much too many ways you can go, and you, the, the precision is going to be you have to feel your passion. You have to feel who you are, right? That presence is very important to figure out exactly, I'm gonna be a UX person. Whether you got, you got the Java class or not, I'm gonna focus on user experience. And I'm gonna be good at it. And I'm gonna know all about the color theories. Oh, everybody got a job with the job. No, I'll stay with what I do, right? Somebody will eventually find you, say, where have you been? Okay? Instead of just keep switching back and forth, that's not a good thing. Right? So in any case, this, these are the classes. I'm not going to hold you any longer here. We can go through them in more detail later. Right? So I will be bringing <coughs> this stuff up in the application engineering. So this is how the program works. Everybody takes the program director's class, semester number one. Right? So the whole semester, you're going to be learning about the program. Why IS? Right? And that's going to make you who you are as a software engineer. Right? <clears throat> but this is one of the premier programs where 
we information system there are only two places in the US where information system is part of is a technical program is here and John Hopkins right other places information system is thought of as a management problem right no it's not a management problem for us information system is an engineering problem right this information system need to be built <laughs> need to be put together there's just all kinds of a human complexities involved and I tell people, look, and this is what you're gonna hear in the application. The minute you put the human being in the middle of stuff, God help you, <laughs> right? And that's exactly what engineering is. Engineers are good at dealing with these humans that gotta be crossing that bridge, or people that gonna try to break it, or huge trucks that gonna go over it, right? The same way with applications. There's always that human element that's gonna be the user and the subject of the application, and you're building the skill set to figure out how the heck these people think and put the controls inside your software to make sure things are, are done right, okay? So I'm gonna keep it short. We will go over these tracks in more detail. Again, like I said, they are all guidelines, all right? For those of you who still have a very strong uh, soft managerial side to software, the digital business track is gonna be there. You still have to take the application engineering. You still have to do that first programming class. After that, you know, if you wanna move away from programming, that's fine, right? But watch out. These employers are still looking for you as a technical engineer, right? It's too early for a management position of anything, right? Oh, I wanna be a manager, please. I don't wanna be a manager, <laughs> even if I was given a chance, right? He's the, he's the manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm gonna keep it here. I will, you know, the full stack engineer. This is the popular thing everywhere, right now, and this is vitally important for computer system engineer. Right. So, so what's the difference between IS and computer system engineer? Not much. That's the uh, uh, simple answer. Right. But the courses in computer system engineering tend to be technical. The students in computer system engineering think of themselves like, you know, I just want to do the development work. I don't care about the human beings, right? And then later they're, well, you know, I really would like to take the user experience class from IS, right? <clears throat> but, so it's supposed to be just the nature of the people coming to the program, that's the difference. <clears throat> but in computer system engineering, you know, you have this benefit and privilege to take classes in IS. Otherwise, you have a, a, a raw set of dry technical courses, except for the user experience class. And many of the students there, they're just happy doing the Scala, the cloud, the multi-threading, and they think of themselves as hardcore, and then they say, okay, well, we need the big data class, where you have to go to IS. I, big data is all because big data is about systems, putting things together, Right? Creating value out of things. So it's a probably these classes are there. But the hardcore programming is computer system engineer. So if you're computer system engineer, be happy and you have the leverage to do whatever you want out of IS if you want to. Right? Because we are under the same umbrella. Okay? But so now when you look at the culture, I have technical people in IS, they're happy, happy to be there, they're very technical but they understand it's all about the application. CSYE, they are very technical and they are very respectful of IS students because they think they are like them, they're solving a, a different kind of a technical problem. So there's a lot of respect between the two groups, right? But for us, it's really, you, you, you can make it a different program or you can just say, well, I have a, a better name called computer system engineer. Right? IS students are benefiting from the history of the program. It's a very famous <laughs> program and known in the Boston area. Right? The others like, you know, feel like you know, they would be more like computer science. Fine. Okay? So, so I'll see you next week. So the classes, you're going to have some challenges signing up for classes. Computer, you, know, you need to sign up for the application engineering for sure. Okay? It's going to be an amazing experience like you've never seen before. All right, a good one, a good one. You're gonna be very proud what you have accomplished. The magic happens in that class. There's gonna be a, an army of TAs to support you, right? 
you know, to take you through the programming exercises. We have so many, I tell you, many of our best projects there are done by students who never programmed before, right? That's, this is the reality of that class, right? Some students, you know, they're panicking, oh my God, the others are better than me. You know, we have, we have some answers for that stuff. You know, we just keep you shackled until you're okay. So it's gonna be a panicky time for about six weeks and after that it's like, oh, we don't have a Java problem anymore. <clears throat> All right, so, so there's a, you know, so that's pretty much, we, 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 there's a game that we play there about, you know, oh, I'm gonna fail. Right? But there are a bunch of TAs that kind of support you there, right? So we took 400 students through that program last semester. 400 students were going through two sections of that class. It was just the most organized thing we've ever done. I should win a prize for that one, but, <laughs> you know. So just because the, 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 the course is very logical, very methodical, and there's an engineering method that the students need to learn, so it was very specific, all right? So as for the other class, <clears throat> generally students like to do the database class to balance it. Database class is lighter. You know, we push some of the data science classes on the students last semester, work it very well for those who are advanced and think they are a big head and they wanna do something big. We say, okay, do the data science class. So we provided an exception. We're willing to provide that exception again. All right, but we have to, you know, so you might have some difficulty for the full classes. In that case, we, we will register you, All right? So the new students will have special service, any difficulty for signing up, okay? We're gonna help you with that. Just because you came late, you know, everybody else came back from co-op, the new students are signing up, All right? So, so there's a database class available to you with Professor Ozbek we just introduced today. Data science classes uh, available. Those of you would like to do something a little bit softer, the organizational changes available as well, the business analysis, or, or whatever. One way to figure things out, look at some of these classes and go attend the first class and see what happened, and then contact us, right? So always send an email, say what the issues are, you know, level of panic and stuff like that, and we know, we'll respond, as we know it, but so it, things might be a little bit delayed, but to just keep on moving, doing on what you're doing, we'll get to you, All right? So, so there will be, for those of you confused between classes, you have to go see the teacher, what they say. So the advanced options will be, you do application engineer with the algorithms or the data science class, for if you're advanced. Otherwise, the typical popular class will be the application engineering and the database or the application engineering and business analysis. Though the business analysis is online, but it's really very interactive and a very popular class. That's a completely software class. You learn the software development cycle, right? Lots of, uh, lots of uh, homeworks, but, but none of them are programming, and that could balance the application engineer. So some of you who would like to make sure that <clears throat> You know, one idea to those who didn't program before, we say, okay, why don't you take the uh, <coughs> object-oriented programming class with it <coughs> from CSYE? So you do the application engineering and you do the Java class out of uh, CSYE 6200. <coughs> okay? So that worked very well for a lot of students who just want to make sure they get their programming skills all worked out. They are not, the application engineering is not a Java programming class. We use Java a lot. But you can learn the programming technique out of the computer system engineering, right? So there are a bunch of options. You write to me if there's confusion or any issues, but things are not gonna be resolved very quickly. You're gonna be in the application engineering and I'm gonna see all the problem. I'm gonna be there with you to manage all these challenges that you might be facing, right? And we will address them. So right now, you wanna calm down, stay warm, right? <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> the cold weather it could not be worse in Boston, right? <laughs> okay, any questions? Yeah, uh, that question. Like, uh, so, so uh, we just have nine credits this semester. So, um, we need, uh, I think it's 32. Seven, 17 credits for co op. Yeah. So, uh, what if, uh, like, um, 
So you can take two classes in the summer and then qualify for the fall. Yeah. Right? I just want you to get to office then. As soon as possible? Yeah. Oh. Everybody yeah. would there. Yeah. Of course not. Join the list. So during summertime, those would have courses? Yes. And, uh, and, 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 and questions like, um, um, I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not go pep rate, I still have one, cl one class is for credit in this semester, so I, uh, is that I, I can only register one class for like in, in, in IS or I can also? That's a, this is a completely different issue. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have to, <coughs> I didn't know Global Pathway students being allowed to sign up for our classes. But yeah. Yeah, so we have to discuss that off the Yeah, maybe later. Okay. So you just arrived, is that the Yeah, you know, I arrived like last semester. I just Okay. Ah. Go to it. So you still have to do it. Yeah. But I still have one class remains. I don't know why. Okay, all right, yeah, you have to deal uh, ask uh, yeah. yeah. We have to okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So email is the best way to communicate, say, state the problem, and if we are not responding, because we don't think it's very critical at the moment, right? There's a solution for it, that's why, right? But if you're near a bridge and you're upset, we probably <laughs> give you a phone call right away, right? But always include your phone number, okay? Because if there's something urgent, then we can call you right away, all right? All right, so only one question? Yes? Uh, so the registrations are already for the courses? Yes. Right? So you, you'll be able to get the application engineering very quickly. Everything else is going to be a challenge now. <clears throat> All right? But try to decide. That's okay if you're signed up for one class at this week. Next week we can get the next assignment. All right? So uh, it's fine. Right? This idea, we need to know, for one thing, it's this class that I want to take, or I want to check a bunch of classes and then decide. For that, you can wait until the end of next week. Okay? So you need to look at the syllabi. Do we, we need to send the syllabi link where all the syllabi for the classes are available. Right? So you can see courses. You see, we, we usually communicate all this information ahead of time, but we're busy with other things. and. So there are some tools that will help you with the classes, okay? Yes? We're in? Okay, we have a contract. Like Professor Tristan said, it's real work now, right? To get to that end game that we started with, right? Okay, thank you so much, all right? Happy to have you.